Shantae with a back with another video. Thank you for tuning in to Shake It Up with Shantae. If you've been here before, welcome back and thank you. If this is your first time tuning in, thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be giving you a tutorial and showing you how I make my homemade from scratch cornbread dressing. It's a long process, but it's well worth it. Everything is from scratch, homemade, and we're going to jump right into this video right now because the video is kind of long, so I'm just trying to shorten it as much as I can. So we're going to get right into it. Okay, so the first step into making this homemade cornbread dressing from scratch is my grandmother has always taught me to use a hen. A hen because it has the richness of the fat that you need, the consistency of the fat that you need, and the taste with the broth that comes from the hen that's key to this homemade cornbread dressing. So basically I have cleaned it as normal. I rinsed it off in the sink. I degutted it. That means I took the inner, um, the giblets out of it, comes out the sack from the under underside of the hen. So I took that out and I cleaned the, the hen very well and I put it in this huge crock pot that I have and it's gonna cook in here for about 10 hours, about 10 hours. I'm gonna check it after eight hours, but I have it on low um, and I'm gonna let it, I have the timer set. I'm gonna let this cook in here for approximately 10 hours, but I will check it after eight hours. It is a huge hen. It's about seven pounds, maybe eight pounds, I believe. So I'm gonna let this do its thing in the crock pot overnight, and then we will continue this a little later. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of seasoning to this, not much. This is um, garlic powder. I really just wanna season the broth. This is onion powder. I'll be adding regular salt. And put a good bit amount of salt in it. Also black pepper. I don't have to put any other seasoning in here like um, thyme and sage, um, butter, anything like that because I want the natural flavors of the hen in my broth. So that's all the simple ingredients that I need for now. I did put this on about 30 minutes ago. I don't need the water to cover the hen completely. I just need it to be almost at top range because once it once it cooks, the hen is gonna produce um, more liquid. So I left enough room for it to produce enough liquid for me to make my cornbread dressing. So once this get done, I'll be back in nine hours and show you how it looks. All right, y'all, so we're five hours in on my hen. Hey, that wrap. <laughs> that was a rhyme right now. I got bars, okay? Five hours in on this hen, and you see the, the broth? Do you see this broth? This is what you want. You want the thick richness, the fatness of this hen to come out and it has produced more liquid like i said and we're only five hours in um i'm gonna come back in about two hours and maybe flip it but for right now this is good um the crock pot is doing its job and the hen is working with it so I just wanted you guys to see halfway in. With five hours, we have five more hours to go. Like I said, I'm gonna come back in a couple of hours, which is eight hours, um, and just check it and see if it's, I already know it's not tender right now. I'm not even gonna poke a hole in it or try to cut it or anything because it's only been cooking for five hours on low. So I'm gonna let it do its thing for a few more hours and we will be back. All right, y'all, I just took my hand. I just took the lid off the hand. So I'm just coming over here to give it a quick turn to let you guys see how it looks. I'm going to turn this big baby over on the front side. Okay. I just turned it over. And we still have about three and a half hours to go. Mmm. That broth is looking thickness. See y'all in three and a half hours. 
All right, y'all, so now that my hen has been cooking for about five and a half hours, I'm gonna go ahead and make my cornbread dressing, my cornbread for the dressing. I know some people like to make their cornbread days and weeks in advance and put it in the freezer and refrigerate it, but you really don't have to do all that. If you wanna save some time, you can, but I mean, a few hours, it won't hurt. Actually, I like my cornbread to be kind of fresh when I'm making it for my dressing. I'm not exactly for sure how much cornmeal or cornbread you'll need for your dressing. I'm just making a small pan because this is going to be for home. I do um, I do plan on going to family house for Thanksgiving. And um, they have dressing there. My sister makes dressing just as good as mine. So, But I'm making a pan for home because I know she won't have any leftovers. So I'm making my own. Anyway, this is about two cups of cornmeal, maybe a cup and a half. And I'm just going to put, this is your basic this is your basic cornbread for your dressing. You don't have to do anything special to it. It's just cornmeal, self-rising, two eggs, um, some oil. Let me put a little salt in here, a little salt. I always put a little salt in my cornbread. Let me get my milk. And this is just regular whole milk. This is regular self-rising cornmeal, two eggs, and some milk. This is probably about a cup of milk. And this is the basic cornbread. You don't have to put all the seasonings in there that I see a lot of people do. They season it up. I, I do put a little salt, but thyme, sage, all-purpose seasoning or all-spice seasoning, you don't have to really necessarily put that in your um in your um corn cornbread batter as you're making it because you're gonna do all of that once your cornbread get done and you start mixing everything. But I will add a half a cup of oil. This is regular vegetable, regular cooking oil. I'm gonna add a half a cup to it. And that all it is to it. That's it. That's my that's my cornbread for my cornbread dressing. That's all you need. Cornmeal, maybe a little salt. If you want to season your your mixture up, you can season it if you want to. But you don't. That it's, it's no need to season it. So I'm just gonna pour it in my cornbread pan here. I've oiled it. I'm gonna pour this in here. My oven has already preheated. On 350, I'm going to bake this, and I'll be back when it's done. All right, you guys. So after my hen has cooked its full 10 hours, this is what you get. I had this on low in this crock pot cooking for 10 hours. I did, as you see, come back in the video, and I checked on it every few hours or so, but it has been cooking in here for 10 hours. This was done, today is um, today is Wednesday, so the time now is like, what, 10.30? So this has been done since about 6 o'clock this morning because I did put it on yesterday evening sometime. So I let it cook on low in the crock pot for 10 hours, like I said. This was kind of a big hen. I want to say it was anywhere between 8 and 10 pounds, but this is what I wanted from this hen. This is the way my grandmother did her hens, uh, cooked her cornbread dressing, she used a hen. I know some people like to use chicken thighs, some people like to use turkey, turkey wings, um, turkey legs, but I like to use a hen because that's the way my grandmother did it, and that's the way I know how to do it, that's the way I like it best. So you get this rich, thick broth. Look at this thick broth, and you get a lot of it. This is a very rich and thick broth. So I'm going to now take this hen out of here and debone it because I will be using parts of this hen to, to go in my actual dressing. And I will show you that part when I get to that step. All right, y'all. So now I have taken my hen out of the crock pot. This is the meat and the bones. You see how tender it is? It all kind of shredded up a little bit. That's what I want. That's what I want it to do. I have taken it out of the crock pot, and then over here, I have the broth where I have strained it, put it in the strainer. Let me remove this. Okay. I have strained my broth. Okay. And this is what you get. 
this is what I'm looking for. This is the bra that I'm looking for. Mm. This rich, thick bra. So this is gonna cool down for a few hours before I begin to put all this together. So, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how I separate the pieces of um, the darker meat and a little bit of the whiter part of the hand. Um, I'll show you how I do that and how I'm gonna incorporate it into my um, cornbread dressing. All right, so this is the next step. This is an added ingredient. I have bell pepper here that I'm chopping up, dicing up very, very fine. I also have three stalks of celery that I'm going to be adding in. A lot of people don't like to add bell pepper to their dressing, but hey, I like it in mine. If you don't like it, omit it. All right, so I have my bell pepper, and I'm going to saute this. These bell peppers, onions, and celery, I'm going to saute this in a skillet with butter. Um, until it's soft and until my vegetables are translucent. I'm going to dice them up just like so. Alright. Do my celery the same way. All right, y'all, so I'm done chopping up the vegetables. Here they are. This is all of my bell peppers, celery, and onions. I put them in some butter that I let melt down. And I'm going to cook these together until they have uh, gotten really soft and become translucent. So, that's all of vegetables and I'm gonna stir them in this butter I'm not gonna add any seasonings or anything to this I chopped it up very fine as you can see and I'm just gonna let it cook kind of sort of on low let me turn it down a little bit because I think I got it up a little bit too high yeah because you don't want it to burn. You don't want it to be black. You also don't want it crunchy. You don't want your dressing to have crunchy bits of <laughs> celery, onion, and bell pepper in it. So that's why you want to cook this down. And you're just going to let it cook until it gets really soft. All right, here's the finishing of my celery, onion, and bell pepper. This is how you want it to be loose like this. I just turn it off, so I'm, I'm gonna let here let it sit here and cool down. All of my ingredients is ready. All of my other stuff, my cornbread is ready, my hen is ready, my broth is ready, and we're gonna get ready and put this dressing together. All right, now you guys, we are going to put this dressing together. These are the rest of the ingredients that I would need. Very simple. So I'm, I'm gonna be using black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder a little sage, cream of, mush, cream of mushroom, one can, cream of celery, one can, four eggs, a stick of real butter, and this is the hand that I shredded, that I've taken off the bone. I'm gonna be using about this much for my dressing. So let's get started. All right, I have my pan here. This is gonna be the pan that I'm gonna mix it in. I'm going to take this cornbread, which it has been sitting for a while, I'm gonna take this and dump this right in this pan. Okay, that's my cornbread. I'm going to crumble this up like so. It's still a little warm, but that's okay. And this is this is the consistent of cornbread that you want it to be. Now, if you use cornbread that has sat in the freezer or the refrigerator, you know, for weeds, you want it to at least um, sit out so that it can become 
room temperature. That's why I just rather do my cornbread on the day of. So I'm just gonna break that up and I'm gonna use my hands to just crumble this up. You want this crumbled up really, really fine. All right, I've added, I've crumbled the cornbread. I've added one stick of, one stick of melted butter, one can of cream of mushroom. All right, I'm going to add one can of cream of celery. Now, after that, I'm going to add my chopped celery and onion mixture that I have here with the butter. And I'm going to put that right on top so we can start melting that soup mixture down. Then I'm going to add my seasoning. I love black pepper, so I'm going to put a little extra black pepper. You don't have to put as much. And all of these seasonings are substitutable. Like I always say, this is onion powder. You can put whatever seasoning you like to taste in your dressing, but I can tell you the onion powder, black pepper, sage, um, those are some of the key ingredients that you want to use. This is a little bit of garlic powder. I won't be using any thyme. I think sage is just fine. If you want to use their all-spice seasoning or something like that, that poultry seasoning, you can use that. I'm going to put my four eggs in here. I'm going to sit them here first. I'm going to mix this before I put the eggs in. But I'm going to go ahead and put my hand in that I've shredded up. I didn't want to go ahead and add my eggs because I knew my onions and celery was still a little warm that hadn't cooled down and I don't want my eggs to cook. So I'm going to whisk those separately and add it in here. But this is my hand that I, I use some parts of it white and some of the dark parts. Use whatever you like. If you just want to use the all white meat, you can. Okay. And now I'm going to add some of the broth. I'm gonna mix this well first. And as you can see, I have a lot of broth. I have a lot of broth. Let me take this out. I won't put any salt in there because remember I put salt in my broth and I also put salt in the cornbread. So I know it doesn't need any salt. This looks amazing, you guys. It's smells so good you could just eat this pretty much just like this I didn't put the eggs in yet so yes you can eat this just like this it smells absolutely amazing I don't even have to taste this because I know it tastes good I'm going to put a little bit more broth in here This is not the pan that I will be uh, cooking this in. I have a little smaller pan. Like I said, I'm just making enough. For my household, I'm going to my sister's and they're gonna have dressing in there. She's making dressing and her just dressing is just as good as mine, but I know it won't be any left. And I wanna have some for a couple of days at home. So when, when you're putting your broth, don't put too much. Just Put as much as you think you're going to need and then just keep adding. It's easier to add than it is to take away. going to put a little bit more. And y'all see I got a lot of broth left. I could take that broth in a couple of days if I freeze it. I could take that broth, add some rice to it, honey. And that'll be some good eating right there just by itself. So now I'm going to get me on fork, mix my eggs.
a little bit and mix it up. Pour a little bit more. And this was only four eggs, y'all. Four eggs. I'll mix this up really, really well. I'm going to go ahead and put the remainder of this chicken in here. And I'm going to add a little bit more black pepper to this. And that's because it's mine and I like that black pepper. You, of course, don't have to put as much black pepper in yours. All right, so this is done. This is the consistency that I want my dressing to be. Just like that. It's not too wet. It's not too dry. Make sure everything is well incorporated. Okay, I'm gonna grab my pan. All right, y'all, I had to clear my work workspace. I already have my oven set preset at 350. So this is probably gonna take about 45 minutes to cook, and this is the pan that I will be transferring this in. So I'm gonna just pour this in here. And it's the already um, buttered. I sprayed it with some of that butter spray. So I'm going to pour all of this in here. All right. Smooth this down. I lightly sprayed my pan with some butter spray. That's what you see on the sides. There's some butter spray. So this is ready. Be back in 45 minutes. My dressing is completely done. I've checked it once. You see it's still a little jiggly in the middle. Just a little bit and that's what you want. You don't want this to cook all the way and get stiff all the way because then you will have a dry dressing. Look how beautiful this dressing is. Golden brown. I mean, this is the perfect homemade cornbread dressing. The perfect, I mean, this is perfect. You can't get no better than this, folks. You cannot get any better than this. So, if you go through all the steps, like I told you, your dressing will turn out just as when it did cook exactly about 45 minutes. That's how long it cooked in my aluminum pan. I buttered my edges and poured everything in there. So, after that long, tedious process, cooking your hand. I cook mine for 10 hours because it was so big, but if you get a regular size hen, you probably can cook it for six or seven hours. But mine had to cook for 10. I sauteed my onions, bell peppers, and celery, and butter until it became translucent. I uh, <clears throat> mixed together all of my seasonings that I told you. I made the cornbread. This is what you get in the end from real down to earth homemade cornbread dressing. Once this sit, I'm going to let this sit for about 15, 20 minutes, and then I'll come back and cut a piece with some of my old faithful jelly cranberry sauce. All right, y'all, so I got me a little bit of this dressing. I hate to get so much of it, but I done tasted a little bit already because my grandbaby, he wanted some. And uh, I'm just going to put I'm just gonna put a little bit of cranberry sauce on here and taste this for y'all. Just a little bit of that jelly cran Look at Look at this dressing. Look at it. Look at it. Look at this dressing. It stands up. It stands up. Look at it. Oh my goodness, this is good. Mmm, mm, y'all. Mmm. We got some pieces of hen in him. Throughout this dressing. Lord have mercy. Mmm. The best dressing I have ever had in my entire life. Mmm. 
You can taste all the seasoning. You can taste everything in it. Mm. Best dressing hands down. Listen, if you have not done so and you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel because you're going to enjoy these recipes that I'm bringing to you. All right, y'all. So I just had to stop for a second because I had, it came to me um, in memory that I wanted to thank Miss um, Flower Glamorous. She spoke very highly of me in her last video, and I want to thank her so, so much. She just don't know how that made me feel, and I feel like, you know, we need people like her in the world to uplift people and to encourage them because what she said about me and what you spoke of me, um, Miss Flower Glamorous, it just, it just speaks volumes, and I just want to say thank you so, so much for being so supportive and encouraging. You actually inspired me to continue to do this the way that I've been doing it, and I really, really appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. All right, now that I've gotten that out of the way, let me just go ahead and say, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and also that notification bell, so every time I upload a video, you will be notified. Thank you so much, and hope to see you on my next video. Bye.